This is Robin Martinelli, the Beyond the Evidence Martinelli Investigations. I would like to thank Northeast Georgia Business Radio X Studio for being so wonderful and great. The name of this show is 13-Year Process, so I'll take you down a journey. Kind of emotional journey, but I'll take you down a journey. I've been a private investigator with a single license since about 1998. Married my husband in 2000, April Fool's Day. So yeah, that's kind of a joke, but it is April Fool's Day. He came with two wonderful little girls, and I had a son. So I adopted the girls, and my husband adopted my son. Christine Kelly's mother has passed away. There were some dreams and goals that I wanted to give to my girls and some future. I just didn't think it would happen this way. I know that in a body image person, a woman, images of your body becomes very needy and very a strain. And I'm sure there's women out there that understand the body image. So as I uh, was progressing through my marriage in 206, I asked my husband, was it okay if we could have some plastic surgery? Little did I know that was my journey. This show is also dedicated to Vanessa. In 2006, I did have my plastic surgery. Things did not go well. From 2006 to 2013, excuse me, from 2006 to 2019, I struggled a lot with walking and blood situations, and it was very painful. In 2006, when I came out of surgery, and I knew that things were going to be a little bad, Christy was my oldest child, becoming an 11th grader to a 12th grader at Grayson High School, and I needed a lot of help with my business. And I I didn't know if she could step up to the plate, but I knew that she had a quiet demeanor. She's definitely her father's child, and she's a lot like my husband. Throw in there a little bit. My husband is a retired police officer, still a police officer, and my girls are in law enforcement. So when we decided to have the surgery, I thought I was going to recoup for about a week or two, but I really couldn't walk. I literally could not walk on my left leg. It took about six months to diagnose me, so I came home and I was in this little pity party, and I asked Christy, I said, look, Christy, there's a lot of things that need to be done with the company. Martinelli Investigations had been birthed in 2003 from my process-serving company, so it was quite busy. So in the state of Georgia, back then, at the age of 17, which Christy was, you could become a private investigator, but little did I know she would become the most famous, youngest private investigator in 2006 and seven that we ever knew. Christy started working cases. Now, please know back then, I think I've mentioned it before, that you had to go to a six-month school every Tuesday and Thursday night from 6 to 10, and you really couldn't miss anything. So Christy actually would get off from high school and go straight to Gwinnett Tech College and take her private investigation course, which was very expensive. And she did that, and she loved it. I started putting Christy on jobs Two of the most wildest ones was she, my girls were into equestrian and they really love horses and they both competed too. And they both had their horses. One of Christie's first cases was to actually go to a horse barn and a horse show and actually film two horse trainers that were having an affair. And it was just so hilarious how it turned out because you would never expect this little shy girl that's 17 years old was busting people for cheating spouses. But it was just another day for her. In the front of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, it would say she's serving French fries. She's not serving French fries. She's serving papers. Christy did so well. I wanted to thank her and the Atlanta Journal-Constitution for being a great senior superlative from her high school and bought an ad about her and told the reporter about her. Well, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe she was 17 in the state of Georgia, actually doing private investigation work. He couldn't believe that she was doing it. And so I had to show my license. I had to show her license. And it just exploded. CNN, ABC, The Montel Show, Geraldo Rivero Show, a whole bunch of media outlets were at her graduation. And little did I know she didn't tell anybody she was a private investigator. So that was quite funny. But in doing that, she helped out with the company, and I really appreciated her. All of my children became a certified private investigator at one time or the other, along with some of their friends. 
it was quite interesting to have 17, 18 year olds doing adult work, but yet you would never see them. They could just be right underneath your nose and filming everything. So she did really, really well. So since that time, I wasn't walking well. That's why this is a 13 year process, because that was 2006. So I wasn't walking well, but I was doing the best I could. And I was going through quite, quite a lot of operations for my leg. And it got really difficult. I never knew I wasn't walking well. So my husband was like, you're not walking well. And so it was June of 2019. Me and my husband took a trip to Mexico. COVID wasn't coming yet, but it was kind of being talked about. So the funniest thing in Mexico was we were there with a lot of people that were leaving their country to come to Mexico to not have to deal with COVID. So there was a lot of people that we were there with and... Uh, you can call it epiphany or but I was jumping off rocks and swimming with bats and the bat cave and you know just having a whole lot of fun and I don't know what it was about something telling me that you know this could be the last time when we returned home from Mexico in June my foot was purple and it was profoundly purple so I took a picture of my foot and I sent it to the doctor's office have to give a big shout out to Dr. Mudalar and Dr. Austin for doing everything they could to save my leg. The second I took that picture, it really alarmed them. So I literally went straight to the hospital. The doctors came in and like, Robin, this really doesn't look good at all. The wonderful thing was my daughter was pregnant. Christy was pregnant. This was a big surprise. We all prayed in the room. There were so many people that came to the hospital. Mind you, this was before COVID. So the hospital was just packed and So the doc came in and he looked at me and I said, okay, look, how much of my leg are you going to take off? And that was always a big thing when you're an amputee and you don't have your leg. It just depends on how much they're going to take off. So he literally drew on a napkin. I still have that napkin today. He said, I'm either going to take off two inches below your knee or I'm going to take off your thigh or we're going to go all the way up to your back. And so I just started crying and, you know, I looked at Christy and I just, you know, hugged her and hugged her belly and (laughs) was just talking to this little being inside her going, I think everything's going to be okay. He says, let's go do this. And for some reason, he gave me ketamine, which really, really threw me for a loop. I'd been under anesthesia a lot, but I'd never had ketamine, which can kill a horse. So when I was getting my leg amputated, it was, I was talking to Martians and they were talking back and I just swirled around this big, big loop and landed in a wheelchair. And as I landed in the wheelchair, there was this little girl sitting down in a little stoop and she looked up at me and she goes, and mind you, this was three months before my granddaughter was born. Little girl looked up at me and she goes, Gigi. And I said, yes, honey. She goes, what are you doing in a wheelchair? And I said, no, the bigger thing is, what are you doing on in my dream here, or my amputation, she says, well, I'm coming near Thanksgiving Day, and I'm a girl. And she just, she just looked up at me, and I just grabbed her and put her in my wheelchair, and we just wheeled around and had the best time. So Renee Evelyn Keck was born the day before Thanksgiving, and she calls me Gigi. So she's like my everything. As I woke up, everybody was laughing because I was feeling my leg and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I've got my knee. Oh my gosh, I have my thigh. Oh my goodness, I have my bud. I have my cellulite. So I was just so grateful to have my entire leg and two inches below my knee. But I just assumed that we were just going to grab a prosthesis in a week or two and I was just going to be off and running. And little did I know that's not how you get a prosthesis. When you're in the hospital, of course, I'm trying to run my business. You can't fire the boss. So I was very grateful that I was an entrepreneur and I had my own business. I was very grateful to the staff that was helping me out. I was still answering phone calls and everything in the bed. You don't get your prosthesis right away because you have to heal. So I was trying to maneuver getting out of the hospital in a wheelchair, going to cases, going to court. And mind you, the sheriff's deputies and Gwinnett and Walton, DeKalb, that I was used to seeing every other day were my cases, were just totally shocked. They just, they just didn't know what to say. Some of them were in tears and they're like, did you get in an accident? Did something happen? And of course, my husband tells me I need to start telling everybody it was a big shark bite. It takes a while to get your prosthesis because you have to heal and then you have to go get fitted and then you have to find the prosthesis that you want. And then the prosthesis are so expensive, even if you have insurance. If you see my Facebook, you go all the way back to 2019, how I struggled and 
cried a lot and had pity a lot, but my disability doesn't make my ability not to be able to do what I still love to do just because I'm minus a leg. It does make interesting for my cases because I cover it up a lot so you can't tell it, but it was just a whole new world after my 50s when a part of you, because they don't prepare you for this, a part of you just leaves and it's gone. And so I missed my toes. I missed my ankle. I mean, I'd, I'd had these, this body part, you know, ever since I was born and it was just difficult. I also want to thank my husband for being, and my family, for being the best that they could be to help me um, through this because I had a lot of support. So you really find out who your friends are when you lose a body part plus my staff too. They've been great. I guess the biggest message of this show is that just because you have a trade and something you do, and then you become, I don't like the word disabled, so you become an amputee, things just change. And so you just do things differently. You take your wheelchair everywhere. You take different legs everywhere. You um, try not to look at people that are staring or people that's going to say something. And, you know, you just try to keep on going. But I'm very thankful for my business. I'm very thankful for the people in my industry. And I've taken a couple of hits for my industry, but I love being a private investigator. I love working in the field and promoting my business. And I'm so glad I have an opportunity to do a podcast that my little four-year-old granddaughter one day can understand how great her mom is and how great the family is. So the way my life has changed a lot, I like to call it my ability because it's not a disability. I try not to take things for granted anymore (laughs) at all. That's number one. It takes a minute to put a leg on. Uh, Most people just roll out of the bed, put their two feet on the ground. And I tell people that a lot. I'm like, I don't I don't know why you're so sad about things or, or things could be so bad when they're going through a divorce or something. I'm like, you wake up every day and put two feet on the ground. I can't wake up anymore and put two feet on the ground. Now the phantom pain? No, I don't have phantom pain. But I used to envision that my leg, that I could just, I can't tell how many times I just roll out of bed thinking I could just put my two feet on the ground because that's what you're used to for 50 plus years, 52 years. Once you, people assume when you have a prosthesis that we wear it all the time. We go to bed in it, take a shower in it, swim in it. That's not the case. I realized that I wore my prosthesis from probably 7 or 8 in the morning until 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. And that's very unlikely. A lot of people only wear their prosthesis one or two hours a day and they stay in the wheelchair. I'm a big advocate for helping people get prosthesis because they're very expensive, like 30, 35,000 per leg sometimes. So I'm a big advocate to get out of the wheelchair. Now, yes, um, does it hurt after a while? I mean, you could just imagine your weight and your balance and what you have to do to put the leg on. So I have a silicone sleeve and that's really, really nice. That's like cashmere. So I I spray the silicone sleeve with alcohol and water and then turn it inside out. And you have to get it just right. So you can't mess up the way it's going on. You have to remember it's just right. So that takes a minute. Once the silicone is on, then I pick between my regular leg and my Nike leg. I have a Nike leg that I'm very proud of. My Nike leg allows me to bounce and it's very bouncy like a blade. It's just weightless. It's kind of a fun leg, I guess you can say so. But I can't wear it all the time because your hips and your balance. And you can't lose a whole lot of weight and you can't gain a whole lot of weight when you have a prosthesis because it's fit to that part of your leg. Now, I'm very excited that I am below the knee amputate, amputee, meaning I have my knee and I have two inches below my knee, which helps me, you know, get in, in and out of the pool and the hot tub and the tub and in and out of the shower. So I have that knee. People that don't have their knee and it goes all the way up to their thigh is a total, total different amputation because they have to strap on, you know, different stuff to make that leg stay because I go to support groups and I'm just very grateful that I'm two inches below my knee. I'm very grateful it's my left leg because I drive with my right. I'm extremely grateful for that. I have a friend, Ariel, that's an amputee, and she's quite younger than me, and it's her right. I see how much more difficult it is for her to get in a vehicle, take her leg off, and drive. 
how is it different to do a private investigation? Well, I hope people don't look back at my Facebook to recognize me, but kind of been the face of the company forever. So you can look me up and Christy too. So I try to wear boots. I try to wear, of course, that's really bad in August when you're sweating and everybody's in sweats. But um, I try to wear boots and I try to hide it and I can. But sometimes when I walk, I can't hide it. And sometimes I just have to take it off. It just gets very, very hot and very sweaty, I guess you can say. So you, you take it off and where it becomes where it becomes very embarrassing and <laughs> shout out to the person that helps me clean my house. I came home and I forgot my leg in the truck. And, you know, so I just kind of got all in concrete and scooted and scooted in the concrete, scooted in the house. And she's just looking at me. I said, I I forgot my leg. (laughs) She's just like, I'll go get it. The trauma is still there of trying to understand. And you, you just give up asking why. You just don't is the why is not anymore. You your new normal becomes a normal without a leg. And that new normal helps you to sit differently in booths and chairs and, you know, rides at the amusement park is different. Yeah, I have to take a wheelchair wherever I go if I stay overnight. So I have to take my own wheelchair because when you're in bed at night and you take off your leg, you have to have the ability to go to the bathroom very quickly so you don't put your leg on you hop into the wheelchair real quick and at our house thank goodness we don't have any doors in our house so the wheelchair is able to get through I'll never forget got out of the hospital and Doug my husband was ready to go home he's like you know what I'm thankful for of course I'm like what 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 could you be thankful for like you have two feet he said I'm very grateful and thankful that we have a house that is a one level in Auburn, which we do. We love Auburn in Barrow County. So it is a house where I don't have to go upstairs. And he was very grateful for that because we had just moved into the house and within a couple of weeks, my leg was amputated. So our other house in Grayson had three levels. So I have no idea how that we would have managed that. So he was still grateful to this day for that. And then our little dog, Gracie, that showed up right after that, too. So she's been to the hospital with me. She's been everywhere. She's a great little pet. That Big shout out to Doug Martinelli for uh, putting up with me. And I think I'll always say this. If I could give one wish to the whole world for anything that they could have, I would wish that they had a spouse like mine. You know, Doug's just, uh, he's just everything like everything. I'm probably not an easy person to put up with, but he's just like my everything. Yeah, I just celebrated 24 years, <laughs> April 1st. And a shout out to my kids too. Love them too. It's different, but it's okay. Please contact us by our website, martinelliinvestigations.com. Martinelli ends in an I. Investigation starts with the I, so that's two I's with an S on the end. Our email is M-I-I and then Georgia spelled out, G-E-O-R-G-I-A-P-I at gmail.com. And please call us anytime at 770-337-3999, 770-337-3999 for a free consultation. Thanks so much and have a great peachy day.